I'm just going to go through like a little continuation of what we were discussing last week, where we were talking about Gnosis and the um, of wisdom, the sacred wisdom, sacred knowledge of our ancient past, discussed by our brothers who were within the ASEAN practice. And the seers, they practice Gnosis. And in it, it talks about the creation of the, the world, the universe, the gods, the angels and the archangels, Adam and Eve. And eventually, well, Adam and Eve is the discussion of humankind being manifested in this reality now. And we did touch on it. And I only touched on it because I was going into the discussion of the light and the dark when we was going through that text there. Into now the thing is the whole story, as we briefly, briefly touched on last week, is an internal story. Last week I mentioned something about that we sometimes think that scripture is a thing of the past and scripture is a thing that happened to a, a distant age, ancient people. But this isn't the case. So scripture is um, a living, a living manifestation in this moment. Why? Because most of it, when you really understand the allegory, the codex in scriptures, is what they called it in them time there, Codex Inscriptus. When you understand the codes in the language, then you realize it's about the body. It's about how the body can transcend its physical form and become something greater than what it is. And all that book really is describing is the space where this force emanates from, this potential force or power, where it emanates from and how we can utilize it to create what we want to create. This is what really the creation of the world, what this book is talking about. And this is, let's say, probably the first half of the book. So just a recap. Gnosis is generally talking about the salvation of the soul, how to become or how to realize your true nature. And in this particular text, it's talking about the internal alchemical process that takes place between the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. The rivers of water that dwell in the sacrum and how it ascends up the spine into the heavens or the cerebellum where the cherubim dwell and they circle around the pineal gland and they protect and watch over the two sacred trees. But this is like an orchard going on when you look into the text. There's not just one tree. It makes four four main trees. Yeah, so just trying to give an introduction to the text. Because you say, you, you say the text as it's done, it don't make no sense. But what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to read a bit of it, as opposed to uh, reciting it from my head. So, so, on the origins of the world, that's the name of the text, on the origins of the world. Seeing that everybody, gods of the world and mankind, say that nothing exists prior to chaos. This thing, I shall demonstrate clearly that they are mistaken because they are not acquainted with the origins of chaos nor its roots. Here I will demonstrate so all people shall understand on the subject of chaos. Here is the demonstration. They say that it is a kind of darkness, but in fact, it comes from a shadow, which has been called by the name of darkness. And the shadow comes from a product that existed since the beginning. So we're talking about 
the primordial um, creation, where we're talking about a potential field of energy, where stuff is present, but not in action. So let us therefore concern ourselves with the fact of the matter, and furthermore, with the first product from which chaos was projected. And in this way, the truth will be clearly demonstrated. After the natural structure of the immortal beings had completely developed out of the infinite, a likeness that emanated from Hista Sophia, which means wisdom, faith of wisdom, exercised or allowed to come into, into manifestation a primordial light. Immediately, that manifestation itself created heavens and immortal beings. So now the eternal realm of truth has no shadow outside it, for the limitless light is everywhere within it, but the exterior is its shadow, which has been called by the name darkness. From it there appear a force presiding over the darkness, and the force that came into being was called the shadow, the limitless chaos. From it, every kind of divinity sprouted up, together with the entire place, so that also the shadow is posterior to the first product. And in the abyss, that's its shadow appeared, deriving from the after forementioned pistis. Then the shadow perceived that there was something mightier than it and felt envy. And when it had become pregnant of its own accord, suddenly it emerged and engendered jealousy. Since that day, the principle of jealousy amongst all the eternal realms and their worlds have been apparent. Now as for jealousy, it was found to be an aborted fetus without spirit. Like a shadow, it came into existence in a vast watery substance. Then the bile that had come into being out of the shadow was thrown into a chaos, into a part of chaos. So since that day, a watery substance has been apparent and what sunk within it flowed away, being visible in chaos and with a woman giving birth to a child. All her fluidities flew out, flowed out. So just so matter came into being out of the shadow and projected a part of it. And it did not depart from shadow, rather matter was in shadow, being in a part of it. So what we're looking at here, yeah? it's an interesting thing how we describe jealousy being one of the most one of the things that manifested first in creation as an emotion. Because even in Buddhism, we have jealousy as one of the most important things that one has to um, overcome. Jealousy comes up quite a few times in this particular text, where even um, Yada Bayof who we're not going to get a chance to read about, where he himself becomes jealous of his son. Because later on, after Yada Beof, who they're talking about basically here, being born from Sophia, who she gave birth to this child with no consort, Yada Beof. That's probably the next page we're going to go into this one, but we're not going to read that right now. But Yada Beof himself, because he, Sophia favoured his son, his firstborn, his firstborn son was um, came by Eve, he experienced jealousy because Sophia cast him to hell. And in hell, jealousy was born without a spirit. As it said, again, an aborted fetus, it never came into manifestation. It dwells and hides in the darkness. It only, we only give it life. It's through us that 
such an energy manifests because it has no soul. Jealousy. That's why it was aborted. If jealousy had a soul, then jealousy would be walking around in the physically. All right.